Welcome back. Well, war between Russia and Georgia, the ongoing financial crisis, the unstoppable rise of China, the fault lines of our world are rapidly changing. My next guest has witnessed many of those changes at first hand. After a long and successful career in British politics, Chris Patton became the last British governor of Hong Kong. And uh, after that, he served as European Commissioner for Foreign Relations, written a lot of books, and now his latest one is here, which is called What Next?, which is looking at the world surviving the 21st century, in which he explores the major issues facing the world today with one shock revelation, which is that you have never eaten a Big Mac. No, that's true. In your life. Um, my children uh, challenged it. Um, but we went through the evidence and we agreed that I had eaten French fries out of their baskets in a, <laughs> in a McDonald's. And I'd drunk coffee, but I'd never actually eaten a Big Mac, so I'm in a small minority. So you, you held on and you're, you were vindicated after this examination. As I... I've never eaten dog in China either, so... No. Uh... Oh, no, no, no. But, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't your way of striking back at Dick Cheney or anything <laughs> by... by uh... <laughs> now, what about this world that we're looking at here? Um, those, actually, has anything changed for the second edition? It just occurs to me with the things we were just talking about there. Georgia, Russia's behavior, um, the, the economic situation. I mean, has, does that follow on from exactly from yes, what it does. next? I mean, I was, I was writing the book against the background of the roof falling in. Um, I actually didn't finish it until probably June. I was making editions until then. So I've said quite a bit in the book about the uh, am amount of American debt, about the fact that things that can't go on forever don't, um, that the relationship between um, uh, Chinese buying uh, American debt and the Americans running up more debt was unsustainable, greed, uh, bad regulation and so on. I've also, in, the, in one or two other cases, for example, Russia, for example, Pakistan, I think flagged up pretty clearly what I thought was um, going to happen. Someone observed that uh, that you were a good deal gentler on Putin than you were on Bush. I'm not sure that's actually true. What, what, what I say is that um, one discussion of of Putin, which said that he wouldn't have been good enough to actually get to the top of the KGB, I thought was unfair. I thought he was exactly good enough to get to the top of the KGB. But I'm generally regarded as rather rather tough on on Russia and don't put Russia in the same category as, as Goldman Sachs do of Brazil, India, China, the great emerging economies. Uh, Russia is, I think, a very brutal, um, a ruthless, corrupt leadership. They have the benefit at the moment of, of a lot of oil and a lot of gas, though they're not spending enough investing in that to go and extracting it at the levels they'll require. Um, the price of oil at the moment has buoyed them up, but I don't think they're um, a long-term economic competitor like the Chinese or the Indians. What about everybody wants to know, um, do you see the likelihood of a Cold War happening or is that academic? No, I don't think it's, it's going to be back to the Cold War. I mean, um, <clears throat> you and I, pretty much the same age, grew up in a world in which um, uh, we seem to be walking along a precipice with nuclear Armageddon on one side um, and maybe the hope of a better world and the UN on the other. I mean, my first term at university was the Cuban Missile Crisis, when people were seriously worried about buying tins of food to put in the pantry, as my mother did. Uh, seriously worried about it all being up. Um, we're not living in that sort of atmosphere now, but um, the question in Europe, and it's much more a question for us than the United States, is whether the Russians accept a modern world in which you have rule-based order or whether they want a sort of Tsarist world in which you have spheres of influence like after the Congress of Vienna and the important thing for us to say is that they can't limit the sovereignty of countries like Ukraine and Georgia and expect to have um, a, a relationship with the rest of us which is normal. And in, ter in terms of uh, other parts in, of the world there in terms of their developments and so on I mean a lot of people feel that uh, We've concentrated too much on the wrong thing in terms of Russia, in terms of fault lines through Pakistan and so on and so forth, that we have exaggerated the importance or the likelihood of terrorism, that terrorism is not about to rule the world, and that, in fact, the war on terror was in part misconceived. Do you feel that? Yeah, I, I think the war on terror um, 
<clears throat> is a misnomer. I mean, you don't fight wars against um, nouns like that. <laughs> wars involve retreats and advances <laughs> and communiques and so on. Um, but I think we will have, as we've lived for centuries, we'll have to go on living with terrorism. It's more dangerous now because terrorists get their hands on the technology which kills more people. Um, but I don't think there is an inevitable um, a clash between um, civilized countries and, ter and terrorism. I think terrorism can, case by case, be defeated. I certainly don't hold to the view that um, uh, there's a clash of civilizations that the Christian world, the so-called Christian world, the so-called Confucian world, the so-called um, Islamist world uh, won't be able to survive without uh, scratching away at one another. I just don't believe that's true. I think that if you look at most of the evidence, things like the Pew Research Center, most Arab families, uh, for instance, want exactly the same as families everywhere else. I mean, right down to the point, alas, of them um, most enjoying, apart from, I'm sure, frost over the world, most enjoying who wants to be a millionaire, which is a rather depressing <laughs> comment on our times. Yeah. <clears throat> well, in fact, in terms of things in general, are you an optimist or pessimist? Well, I, I've... This book, would you call this book optimistic or pessimistic? Well, th the danger I realized when, when writing it is you go through all the dark side of globalization from drugs to nuclear proliferation to organized crime and so on. And at the end of you think, jeepers, uh, um, am I suggesting that there are so many problems on the sh shoulders of the world that we can't possibly stagger along? Uh, but then at the end of it, um, I concluded that with one exception, the question of climate change, which I think is a, it could be a, um, a game stopper. Um, I think that other problems are manageable and by and large um, we've muddled our way through for several millennia and I'm sure we'll continue to do so. I'm a grandfather now five times over and if you're a grandparent I think you <laughs> you have on the whole to be optimistic because what's yeah. the alternative? Absolutely well and uh, what about today's news did it surprise you that uh, someone else who went to Europe as a commissioner is apparently going back into politics again Mr. Peter Mandelson? Yes it did I mean uh, I, I first heard it from a, from a taxi driver, so it must be true. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, it did surprise me. I mean, you couldn't make it up. It's, uh, as ever, um, political fact is stranger than fiction. It's not quite as odd as the selection of, uh, of Governor Palin on the Republican ticket, but it's not far short. I mean, he's a very um, competent, um, sinuous um, fellow. Uh, uh, intelligent. Um, he's got a terrific reputation for political maneuvering, which I think may be a bit of an exaggeration of his impact on our times, but it shows in a sense, I suppose, um, how desperate Gordon Brown has become, that he's reached back um, into the past in order to bring some um, old folks into the Labour cabinet, some, some experienced people like Peter Mandelson. I don't think it'll make much difference to working out, working our way through the recession. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. Enjoy what next in a moment, the vice presidential debate in America. After this, short break.